Hi, this is my second video of my A8 uh, printer. I've now had it a few weeks. Um, it's been a it's been a journey, let's put it that way. Um, a lot of it is down to getting your head wrapped around the software and configurations and how the each thing interacts with each everything else. Uh, this video today, I'm mainly going to be talking about uh, the modifications that I've done to it, uh, mainly the rewiring. In my first video, I talked about the hotbed and the uh, the wiring and obviously the, the connector at the end w was going. I got a, quite a lot of flack for that uh, because I decided to use uh, some crimps uh, which fitted on quite nicely to uh, uh, where I'd taken the connector off and cut it down. Since then it has actually been rewired, not because the crimps uh, I didn't feel were unsafe, it's during one of the upgrades uh, I had to take the hotbed off and I then damaged one of the pins uh, to the point where it was uh, no longer viable to use crimps. So we'll be going through the sort of various uh, upgrades in the wiring that I've done. I have completely rewired this thing uh, to make it as safe as possible. There is a lot of uh, people talk about having MOSFETs and you know, will the MOSFETs help the hotbed from the connector from burning out? No, it won't. The connector is still an issue. So I'm going to go through uh, the various uh, things I have done. Uh, we're going to start off uh, on this side. Now down here I've fitted a relay. If I can just uh, zoom into that. Now this relay has been designed uh, with some extra switches and uh, a separate 12 volt power supply. Uh, the, the purpose of this is, is that I can leave the printer running and when it gets to the end, it will do an auto shut off and it will kill the power supply. Um, in order to achieve this, I have my main power supply and as you'll see, there's quite a bundle of wires coming out because I have separately powered the MOSFETs and the main PCB, which I will we'll turn the unit around in a minute and uh, show you that. And there's also a separate power supply, which is what they call a bootstrap power supply, which is purely just to run the uh, relay. So basically what you've got is your bootstrap power supply, which is to say it's a separate power supply whose job is literally to supply power to the relay down here. Then you've got your main power supply. What the relay is actually doing is switching the mains live on the power supply. So it's physically turning on and off the, uh, the mains power supply. On the front here, I have a switch that has three positions. In the center, it's off, it's safe. If I flick to the top, it turns everything on and it's just normal. Back to the middle again, turns everything off. If I go down, now this is one of the main reasons I've done this, is obviously with a long print, you want to know that the power supplies and the whole printer and everything is all shut down at the end of it. Which is why using the relay configuration with a separate power supply just to supply the relay and enables me to turn on and off the main power supply. So when it's in position two, I have a reset switch at the top that resets it. Once the print has finished, the head will come along, it hits the end and it turns everything off. What you've actually got here is a little micro switch. And obviously when that hits the end all it does is killing the power to the relay and the relay then shuts everything down. When you come back in again, all you've got to do is reset it. This configuration now means that I can um, leave the printer running and know that it will just shut itself down and turn everything else off. And obviously, when I'm not using it, I can just put it into safe mode. And of course, I can still kill the main power coming into the power supply. Well, if we turn the printer around, on this side, we've got our main PCB which is down here, 
we've got two MOSFETs. The MOSFETs are separately powered by these nice big chunky cables which go to the power supply. Now the cabling that I've used uh, is 1.5mm cable which I think is 16 gauge for Americans, I'm not 100% sure on that. I have separately supplied each one. Now I do know that some people say what you can do is you can bring your supply in and then take it to the next one and so on and so forth. I prefer to have completely separate so I have the power coming in here and power coming in here um, and this is the hot end and that's the hot bed. And then obviously you've got your control signals which just go back down to your your normal outputs on your main board. A lot of people have asked what a MOSFET is. It's fundamentally it's a switch. That's that's all it is. It's an electronic switch. But it's a switch that allows you to turn on and off high current or high power. What's happening here is when the main motherboard says turn say the hotbed on, it sends a signal up these small wires which this big thing here, which is, well that's a heat sink, the thing that's bolted on the front of it is the switch. It sends a small signal to that, which allows the switch, and it then powers it up. So it allows full current to go, to come in, and go back out. The reasons MOSFETs are uh, a very much an advisory thing is because you're taking off all the load of the main board, and a lot of people have said that the main board it just can't handle the power, the connections aren't there properly, uh, you get burnouts and all sorts. This is why I've decided obviously, along with everybody else, to use a MOSFET. Uh, the MOSFETs, as I say, are being powered, going back, there's three main cables coming in here, one that goes to the uh, main motherboard, two here. And then obviously you've got all your other cabling sort of in and around it. When wiring your MOSFETs, in fact when wiring pretty much anything, use crimps. Now a lot of people are sort of just stuffing the wires in, they're not putting them in properly. It can be done without crimps if you, you know, very very careful, but I've seen a lot of pictures online where they are, the, the sort of cabling standard is, or bits of frayed wire sticking out all over the place. I'm going to talk about at the end of the video about crimping and obviously how to make a good crimp. Um, as I say, so I've done this and as I say, it is all completely isolated to each other um, and it's not necessary that you, you have uh, two MOSFETs but they're, own, they're so cheap, you know, it, it's just not worth not having two. Um, but as I say, we'd definitely advise separately powering back to the power supply. See on the power supply you've got... Um, You've got three terminations anyway, so you might as well use them. So I've got one for the uh, hot end, one for the hot bed, and obviously one for the electronics. Then I've got my power coming in, which is going also via the relay switch, which is why there's a, an additional termination there, because that's literally switching the live on and off to the power supply through the relay. Uh, on the back here, while we're here, we might as well have a quick look. We've got our switch that's been added, and we've also got an additional switch here as well, which is the uh, the reset switch when you're in sort of the, the safe mode. And on the back, we have got our newly terminated hotbed. As I say, this was done purely because uh, of damage when I took the hotbed off. What I've actually done is I've taken off all the springs and I've replaced it with spacers, uh, which I've sort of sanded and calibrated to get them down as, uh, as accurate as possible. And then the auto sensor takes over with the rest of it. When this was cabled, um, get the damn thing apart. I deliberately wired it so we've got male and female. So um, I believe 
So the female one here, that's to the thermistor, and the male one is for the main hotbed. I've got a, a photograph which I will put up online uh, in this video showing the uh, connections on here. This soldering here uh, is a bit tricky. You need a decent soldering iron. When you, on the back of the hotbed, there are six connections. Uh, two of them are positive, two of them are negative, and then you've got your thermistor in the middle. The way this soldering's done, which you should be able to see on your screen now with the uh, picture, is that the wire coming in for the hotbed was put in between the two of them, and the solder was flowed between the two pads. Um, and it was done that way specifically to make sure that there was a very strong solder connection. I have sort of seen some people do some soldering on there. You've got to remember that the hotbed is just basically a great big heat sink. And what's happening is if you're trying to put solder on there, it's drawing the heat away um, and it can't flow the solder properly. I think I had my soldering iron up to something like 300 degrees or something, it was something in that area, in order to get it to flow correctly. Um, you need to make sure when you're obviously doing the soldering, it's not you're not just sort of you know dabbing the solder on there and just hoping you've got to get a really nice flow to make sure that everything is is connected properly and you don't get what they call a dry joint um if we carry on spinning this round we should be able to get a slightly better picture of uh, the relay There's the relay, and what you've basically got here is coming out the bottom here. We have our, although I guess it's a two core cable, uh, it's basically switching the live. So, although they're two different colors, unfortunately, I didn't have any sleeving to put over that to, to identify that uh, that's actually live in. Uh, and it's not live and neutral, it's live and live. But that's switching on that relay. You've got the various cabling up here, which goes to, let's say, the switches. What I'll do is I bring my power supply back round this side again. Now, the reason the power supply is uh, separate to, to everything is ultimately this is going to go into a cabinet and the power supply is going to be on the outside. So, if you watch, hopefully this should show up on the video. So that's it, powered. And you saw the little uh, LED come up. That's it in uh, the automated shutdown mode. So I flick the switch at the top. That powers it. And when it finishes, the G-code has been altered so that it goes all the way to the right-hand side, hits the micro switch, which drops the power. Right, so on the front, as I say, we've got a switch. If I put it into my down position, I use my switch at the top. That resets it. And what that's now done is fired the relay. The main power supply has come on and everything's been turned on. The G code's been altered so that when the print has finished, the, tra the head travels to the right hand side, hits the relay switch, and it's now killed the main power supply. So the bootstrap power supply is still running, which is just a very small power supply, so that, that's fine. And when you turn back up again, all you've got to do is move your head off that and hit the reset switch. Obviously, if you're there, you can um, just have it on manual and the switch doesn't do anything and then as I say if you put it into the center it kills it and all that's doing is to say once again is dropping the relay and putting that in. Um, one thing that I've learned and I, I've been a sort of a, a fairly active in the, uh, uh, the forums and the three things that everybody keeps saying and everybody that's ever had issues they you get the same answers time and time and time again 
and I cannot agree with this more. Firstly, tighten your belts. Make sure you've got, print some belt tensioners. Um, the belts have got to be, I mean, that's actually gone a little bit loose, probably because I've been moving it around. And there we go, that's better. Your belts have got to be nice and tight. The tighter the belts, the better you put. Not, not you don't want them so tight that they're going to break, but you need them nice and tight. Um, tightening up this belt, it's, it's just, it's almost impossible to do because of the way it connects to the back. Um, so, first and foremost, get yourself some uh, tensioners printed. Um, as I say, I've got one on the side here, and I've got one on the uh, uh, the bottom for my bed. Um, most people print the nozzle. Uh, that's fine. One of the things that I, I did discover, and I absolutely love this, is the magnetic um, fan for your extruder. It means you can get into your filaments quickly. You can you can see how to feed them, and so on and so forth, and it just pops on there. That's fantastic. I absolutely love that. Um, and as I say, the other uh, um, uh, sort of print that I sort of did was obviously the board for holding the dual MOSFETs and the main motherboard and then we've also got uh, uh, down the bottom here we've got our tensioner there so today that's pretty much what I have been doing is uh, getting the uh, relay into position drilling a hole for that getting everything sorted uh, the rewiring was actually done last week. Um, I did actually want to do the video sort of showing you as I was doing it, but unfortunately I, I was, the reason I actually bought this printer was to print some stuff for uh, my business and uh, I needed to uh, get on with it. Um, so um, yes, I'm gonna, while I'm here actually, there's a couple of little things I have noticed. Um, the couplers at the bottom, I'm just gonna zoom into that one. The couplers at the bottom, there is, uh, I was unaware of this when I first got them. This is actually a spring. These aren't just a pattern. This is actually a spring. And when you put this coupler, so you've got your step motor at the bottom, then you've got your coupler, your shaft coming out, that sticks on, and then you've got your, uh, your threaded rod there. The threaded rod and the coupler should not be touching, okay? They, there should be a gap between them. A lot of people, what they do is they just shove it in and tighten it up. This stops this from moving. When they're apart, you can allow a little bit of movement. Now, I don't know if you can see this. I hope you can see this on the camera. If I push that up and down, I think that's just showing up. You can see that that springs up and down. They're supposed to have a little bit of movement in there. It helps take away what they keep going on about is the Z-wobble. And getting them correct is very important. Now, one of the great things that I found, if I can find the, uh, there it is. What I did was slacken all of these off. I took the spanner that uh, comes with it. I popped it underneath, okay, so there we go, popped it underneath like that, pushed the coupler back down onto it and tightened it up. This means that the coupler, there is a slight gap which brings the coupler up. When you look inside the coupler, the, the, the shaft coming from the, uh, coming from the main, so if you've got the shaft coming from, the, um, from your motor, and you've got your coupler that sort of sits over the top of it. When you look down inside the, 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 the coupler, you'll see that the top is obviously bigger because of the, uh, the threaded rod, and the coupler at the bottom is, is uh, the shaft at the bottom is smaller. Where the two sort of meet in the middle, the top of the motor shaft shouldn't be past the smaller part. And I found that using the spanner tucked underneath was a perfect distance to raise that up. Then drop the shaft in, wait until it hits the bottom, and just turn it very slightly, or sort of, I found that you have to sort of twist it as you lifted it. Lift it very slightly, 
and then tightening up. This means that your shaft and your uh, um, shaft on your motor and your threaded rod are not touching. There is the gap. That gap then allows for the springy movement, which allows to take away some of your zed wobble. So that is something which uh, is sort of a trial and error thing which I found. Uh, the reason I looked at it is I saw somebody had a reference to it somewhere and I can't remember what it was, which then made me go back and, and, and look at it. The only other thing that I've done is put some uh, LEDs around the outside, but there is a cable tie here and here. Because one of the things I found is although this sticks on, um, it was uh, the heat, the, just the sheer heat was just making it sort of the, the glue come undone and it would sort of, I came back one day to find that sort of thing sagging. So I may have to uh, uh, review the lighting at some point. Um, so today I'm quite happy that I've managed to uh, finish off finally all the wiring. Uh, I've now got to put it back into its normal position, which means re-leveling everything. Um, and I'm going to go through that uh, re-leveling process uh, as well.